Yeah. All right. So, um, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rania, for uh, putting together this event. And um, good morning, afternoon, or uh, evening to everyone. So I'm Danya from India, and uh, I thank Carables and Gig for uh, giving me this wonderful opportunity to talk about my project that is uh, very, very close to my heart, and it's very special on um, embracing loss and building care webs. So this project was aimed at creating a mutual aid framework uh, informed by feminist ethics of care uh, for women grieving the loss of an intimate relationship. So on to the project. So this research uh, was driven by my personal experience as a primary caregiver for my husband uh, during his cancer treatment. And uh, as a grieving woman uh, after his demise uh, a couple of years ago, uh, when I encountered the social and uh, legal constructs of grief support systems deeply rooted in patriarchy. So I try to ask the question of how grief and grieving comes into the being for uh, women in digital and online spaces. Right. So caregiving. Uh, as caregivers, we often take up uh, immense responsibilities to provide utmost care and comfort to our loved ones without considering the expectations imposed upon us uh, based on our gender. Um, in Indian society, the role of caregiving is traditionally delegated to women. So during my period of uh, bereavement, I realized that caregivers, especially women, are isolated and separated due to social and legal constructs enforced by patriarchy. This also extends into the grief support systems which are available to them. So as a result of this, they are actually left alone, um, left to deal with the trauma on their own. Um, in today's digital age, uh, every aspect of our lives, including grief, has moved uh, online. Uh, so which this, this was also predominantly seen during the pandemic and uh, my experience with grief was no exception either. So I explored various uh, online uh, media platforms and digital spaces such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and also uh, certain grief support apps. Uh, so here are some insights from my experience with these digital spaces. So for example, in case of social media, uh, Claire Wilmot uh, mentions that while social media may have opened up the space for public mourning, the etiquette for uh, public mourning for ensuring that outpouring supports the bereaved is something that is yet to be developed. And um, caregivers, especially during their uh, grieving period, have to encounter certain official government websites and portals uh, in order to complete some official or legal procedures which are very time bound and uh, require enormous amount of effort, which includes uh, like up to collecting around 20 official documents uh, within a specific period of time. Usually it's days after the demise, right? And third, uh, last but not the least, uh, is about digital identity and possessions. So at this moment, the digital disentanglement falls squarely on the individual, in this case, the caregivers or the people who are grieving. So tech companies should actually consider how they can better support people in disconnecting digitally and securing these digital possessions, keeping in mind uh, data and privacy concerns, right? So uh, about uh, online grief support systems, that is apps or platforms that uh, you can, um, uh, that I had come across. So um, most common trend that was seen among these systems was that they use care as uh, a veneer in the forefront and they create dependency among its users and they perpetuate social inequalities by upholding patriarchal values and capitalize on our vulnerability as a grieving population. So here, this makes us ask the question. Right? question so, yeah. so this makes us ask the question, right? Uh, in terms of uh, do online grief support apps, uh, do they want you to heal? Are they looking to provide you with the support that you require, right? So I created a twine game through speculative projection of my lived experience called Two Separate Paths to showcase these findings and insights. Uh, so this game allows the player to choose from two roles, uh, both of uh, women, which uh, takes you into two different paths, uh, which sometimes converge and sometimes diverge, right? So the idea here is to convey how social norms dictated by patriarchy either grants or denies access to you in your journey as a caregiver. 
and how this actually depends on whether the relationship between the caregivers and their close ones is a socially sanctified relationship or not. So, yeah, all these just showed that online spaces mimic and perpetuate uh, analog spaces, leading to further separation and isolation of uh, grieving women, right? So my goal here was to reimagine these digital spaces through a feminist ethics of care lens by centering the needs and experiences of bereaved individuals. So how should these online uh, grief support systems be created? So we need to create a better uh, grief support system which emerges from care and not merely uses care as a veneer, right? So, and also which supports and acknowledges the needs and struggles of grieving individuals, addresses the impacts of social inequalities on grief because uh, they have a particular impact and that actually in some cases delays, uh, you know, how you heal from this process. And it also allows you to form trusted network which can function independent of these spaces and also acknowledges the complexities of grief. And uh, as we had seen earlier, it should also provide resources for caregivers which will help them through uh, the financial, legal and medical emergencies. So, uh, it should also serve as a secure outlet where uh, grieving individuals can express themselves through journaling or uh, you know, other uh, methods. And uh, last but not the least, challenge traditional roles on caregiving and should take into consideration uh, data and privacy concerns very seriously. Uh, apart from this, they should also help form a mutual aid network. Uh, traditionally, mutual aid networks have been uh, existing for various issues, uh, as we all know. Uh, in case of grief support, they can help form a community uh, that follows the principles of uh, interconnectedness, relationships, and interdependency um, that recognizes and values experiences, perspectives, and emotions around grief. So since the knowledge of one's lived experience, in this case mine, is not transferable and universal, uh, I have described the framework for women who are grieving the loss of an intimate relationship. However, it is important to note that this particular framework, does, uh, it does not speak for individuals from different walks of life. And uh, as we had seen uh, different social markers, uh, uh, some of which include uh, class, caste, gender, sexuality, and race, and many more, actually have an impact on grief, right? So therefore, I view this project as a starting point, and I intend to collaborate with individuals from different socioeconomic backgrounds and identities to document their struggles and diverse needs through grief. So yeah. together, yeah. together yeah. I hope we could build this mutual aid toolkit, uh, incorporating valuable voices and strengths uh, gained through your respective lived experiences. So if you're interested in knowing more, to know more about this project or to collaborate on this, please uh, reach, reach out to me in this email ID. And uh, thank you for your valuable time and for sticking with me till the end of this.